What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to bring you guys a video talking about my own treasure map teams which if you guys want to see the treasure map preparation video that I made recently with more accessible teams make sure to go ahead and check that one out but in today's video we're running my own personal teams which of course are going to be vastly different from what you would have seen in the preparation team video so I know that some people are not going to be able to build these teams and that's completely okay but I know that a lot of people out there still like to see what type of teams I have planning going forward in this treasure map and of course the teams that I have here may change throughout the treasure map as well so when the official treasure map goes live and I get time to do it I will do a full playthrough video for YouTube so you guys can see how the teams work against the bosses of course and if I have any team changes that will be in that video as well but I guess without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the teams so the first fight that we have is going to be versus Gordon, who is a strength boss. There's going to be special charge to all units, which is good for the first boss. And for battle three, there's going to be ship bind. Perfects are harder to hit, which is kind of weird. Uh, slots are changed to badly matching block and bomb, and your top row is binded for six turns. And also 10 turns of chain coefficient reduction. So having a chain lock is going to be best case scenario here. Now for this team, I, of course, I, I like to prioritize speed in my team. So if I can dedicate one or two slots to making the teams run faster, especially for mini bosses, that's always going to be a benefit. And in this team situation, I'm using Daifuku as one of the crewmates here. Now, of course, he isn't really boosted by uh, by Uta at all. I mean, realistically, I could just switch out the Daifuku for, uh, for Arena Caesar, which is probably what I will do because Arena Caesar is actually boosted by Uta. But the, the key thing here is, is that Tezora is our chain locker, and we also have Hiyori, which gets rid of the bind on our uh, captains. And uh, realistically, we'd be using Uta on Battle 1 or Battle 2 to give us the attack and orb boost. So when we reach the final stage, we'll have Uta's boost to our striker and our cerebral characters. We'll have the full board of Wano slots from our Hiyori, and then we're also going to have the chain lock from Tezora. Tezora is a striker character, so he gets the full boost from Uta with the attack and orb boost. So Tezora himself is going to hit extremely extremely hard versus this Gordon fight. Moving on to our second boss versus Usopp and Yasop. So for this fight, Dex, Quick and Int characters receive the special charge time, and there's going to be two hits of special reverse on the final stage. Your ship is going to be binded for 10 turns, there's five hits of paralysis, and there's damage nullification for one turn. So realistically, the way that you're supposed to get around this is by using the treasure map Sanji to get rid of the damage nullification. Sunny Kun gets around the special reverse, gets rid of the ship bind, gives you a full board of matching slots, and then Shiki gets rid of paralysis with his special activation. So that's the way that we're doing it here. But we're also using Cat Viper as the captain because Cat Viper with his uh, super type special or super class special can wave clear the first two stages. And we are using Dog Storm as a sub, the treasure map Dog Storm, because he is a point booster, which works out very well. And then of course, when you use the special ability of Cat Viper, on activation gives you an orb boost, and then after one turn has passed, it gives you an attack boost. So what we can do is we can use the special ability of Cat Viper on Battle 2, so that when we move on to Battle 3, we'll actually get the attack boost. Shiki provides the orb boost to Dex, Quick, and Int characters. We'll have the full board of slots. We'll have Sunny Kun to get rid of the ship bind ability. And the damage nullification, we can just normal attack through it due to the captain ability of Cat Viper. So this is the speed team that I have planned for this team at the moment. Um, and I think that a lot of people are probably going to opt to use either Dog Storm or Cat Viper in this team just because you don't have to worry about the damage nullification. It allows you to kind of skip a special, which is really, really nice. Now we move on to Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo, who is a quick boss. However, they give cooldown to Strength, Quick, and Psy. And the really weird thing with their preemptive is that they will actually change their typing to be either Dex, Quick, Psy, or Int. And this is where you're supposed to use the brand new Super Sugo Fest exclusive Shanks to change their typing into Strength to have type advantage, which is what I'm opting to do. However, there is another really good way around it because Legend Douglas Bullet is actually a boosted unit in this quest. So you can opt to use Douglas Bullet as a captain instead, who is super effective against all types as a captain. Works out very, very well. But when you use Double Shanks as special, it'll give you the matching slots. It'll get rid of the Rainbow Shield on the enemy fight as well. In terms of getting around the Despair, we're going to use the double special activation of Uta, which is really good. We will get around the Resilience with the uh, effect of the Balloono. And also we have the Gordon character, who also gets around the Despair as well. He's just a really nice character to use. And we also have Zorajuro, because he allows us to wave clear the first two stages. Like, you know, Double Shanks and his batch essentially deal with this fight altogether. So it's not really too complex as to why I'm running this team. 
Moving on now to the final battle of the Battle Rushes, which is versus Shanks, and the team that you're really wanting to use here is going to be Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo. Their captain ability and their super typing effect, or the super class should I say, allows you to get around those defensive effects of Threshold, Increased Defense, and Rainbow Shield. So by using their super types or super classes, and also by hitting perfects with characters with barrier penetration, we're able to get around that pretty easily. We do have the Colosseum Kid to wave clear the first two stages, and making sure to use Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo's special on Battle 2, so that when we move into the third battle, we'll have the Orb Boost, we'll have the Chain Boundary still. The special ability of Zephyr can give us a full board of slots and an attack boost, which works great. Izo Okiku are just kind of here because they're a shooter with barrier penetration and they're quick, so we have type advantage. And then Shinobu is just a relatively high booster who is a shooter and also has barrier penetration. So there's no real rhyme or reason as to why we're using this particular team. You know, just running Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, Kid for the Wave Clear, Zephyr because he's an attack booster and gives us matching slots. The rest of it is basically whatever you want. So again, pretty straightforward team. Using the best unit for the fight, of course, makes a lot of sense, makes it very, very easy. And now we move on to the final battle versus Uta. We'll talk about the intrusion boss very soon, but for this battle, fighter, free spirit, and shooter characters receive cooldown. We have Bind and Despair for 7 turns inflicted here, so after Sockets it goes down to 4 turns. The special ability of both Sanji and Zora will both remove some of the Bind and some of the Despair, so ideally using one of the Luffy specials and then going ahead and using the specials, and we'll be able to get lots of damage very, very quickly on Battle 2. After you defeat Battle 2, the enemy will fully revive, however, I don't think the enemy stays there, the enemy might just disappear. We're not too sure how the revive works. In previous fights where they've said that the enemy revives, a lot of the times it revives and then the enemy runs away and you go straight into battle 3. My assumption is that's exactly what's going to happen. We'll have to wait and see though. Uh, battle 3 though, there's going to be 3 hits of special reverse. Now this is where the Luffy super type can reverse some of the cooldowns here on top of the Jinbei special who's going to be very good because he does remove the damage threshold. And with that, you know, you get special reverse which Luffy deals with and the special bind is inflicted to your top row. Remember when you use your Straw Hats or a Shank special, it is going to fully charge Luffy special and it is going to remove the special bind on those Luffy's. So again, the new batch plus Luffy simply deals with this fight very, very comfortably. And then we move on to the final boss versus Chopper, where we get Free Spirit, Cerebral, and Powerhouse cooldowns. Battle 2, there's going to be empty slots, paralysis given to your crew, delay immunity, and there is going to be a quick slot barrier. We're going to use the switch ability of Usopp and Yasop to switch, give themselves a quick slot because we're switching into Yasop, so that enables us to get around the enemy barrier effect. Also, getting around paralysis, I think it's the Sanji gets around the paralysis, if I remember correctly. Nope, it's going to be the Zoro instead, because he gets around despair and attack. Down. I think this is bind and paralysis. Yeah, so we use the Zora special there to get around some of that paralysis. So ideally using both Luffy specials, use the special of Zoro, and then we should be able to get around that fight pretty easily. Actually, because of that, we'll probably switch the positions here just to make sure that we'll get an additional matching slot there, which is good. And then when the enemy is defeated, they heal up to 100% or they heal your crew up to 100% of your max HP, and they also give you six turns of recovery binds. You have to be very careful of that. None of these characters on this crew do have recovery bind either, so you got you're gonna be inflicted with that nonetheless. Then you move on to Battle 3. So Battle 3, there's lots of gimmicks. Six turns of attack down, the Sanji's gonna be good here, he gets rid of the attack down, uses special once, uses special again, it'll get rid of it. Um, however, there's obviously the big issue here of any time you activate an attack boost, orb boost, or a color affinity boost, the enemy chopper will react to it. Now, currently we don't know how this reaction is going to work. We don't know if it's going to launch multiple times or only on the initial activation. So, activate an attack boost, he activates the interrupt. Activate a second attack boost, he won't activate the interrupt. That's how we think it's going to work, but we won't actually know until we get into the fight. So this could actually be a very, very difficult fight. There's going to be defense up as well. I believe Jinbei will also deal with that. And also, when you kill the enemy, he's going to hit 50,000 damage to your crew. And Jinbei provides you with pretty significant damage reduction. So that is also going to be very, very key in surviving that quest. There's also despair as well inflicted to your team. That's obviously going to suck. But of course, the special abilities of Sanji will also deal with that too. So that's... Pretty much how we're getting around the fight, both the, the Sanji and the, the Zoro and the Jinbei, all their Straw Hats, the essentially the exact same team that we have here with Uta versus Chopper, exact same team, exact same point boosters, hopefully does the good job versus this treasure map. 
So with all that being said, that is going to wrap up yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one today. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.